Hey guys, how's it going? I am going to do some Tour 5 for you guys. This is the uh, Winter Lynx course. Um, I am going to stick with Thor's. I think that's a good... Uh, having the accuracy boost here, especially on Tour 5. Um, I really like it on Tour 10, but um, definitely on 5 as well. In terms of a wood, I like Guardian. There's a couple shots where I like having full backspin. You really don't need to be extremely long on this tour. So this can be pretty solid. I like to go with Saturn. It's kind of like a mid accuracy. Like as you see, I have uh, half accuracy on here, which is about two rings per. So basically on full club. Every ring that I need to adjust is about 2 miles per hour of wind. So if I have 10 miles per hour of wind, then I'll go 5 rings. But that's only on max club. But uh, I noticed that maybe like mid club will be like maybe 2.25. And then max club will be like uh, on, on the very small short end of the club. It'll be about 2.5. Which is also, you know, not too, not too challenging to play. So... That's why you'll see me play with this iron. Plus, it's nice round numbers. So, especially when it's sitting on 50, you know, it's a good club for me. Just because, you know, 50 translates to two yards per ring, which is very spot on. It's a nice even number. So... So, all right, let's see what we got here. It's going to be hard going for me in these matches. I feel like a lot of the time it's going to be replays and it's going to be a lot of guys with really good clubs. Um, one of the things, if you have less trophies, you're probably better off than I am. So you might not be faced with the same dilemmas that I am. Uh, it looks like, you know, I can back away from that a bit. Maybe I can even go uh, Quasar Boss here. Uh, it looks like I'd probably kind of lean towards max power. And, and I'll usually try to visualize like four rings out for like a five like that. And then just kind of assume my ball is going to hit about there. This is a downhill tee shot. So, you know, you got to add a couple extra rings. I think the normal, the normal shot might be for that, maybe about three rings, give or take. Ooh, and I am very close. Oh, just put it in the rough. Man. So off to a rocky start already. It's going to be hard going from there. It's kind of a bad break. The odds of this guy messing this hole up are pretty much minute. I was really hoping that, uh, you know, that decision to play that uh, Quasar ball there wasn't going to cost me. But it looks like, you know, I didn't, I didn't play cautious enough. You can throw a Titan on there and you don't even have to use any power. And it just makes accuracy so much more easy so it's probably like the wrong decision there but that's okay no big deal uh, I I just want to kind of give you guys you know a wide range of shots here and you see this guy oh I think he was trying to shank it more than that And that, that ball was funny. Did you see how it got eaten up in the snow? That was kind of visually entertaining. <laughs> the fact
fact that it just dis disappeared in the snow there. Uh, so one of the things you'll see me do here is I'll try to just lay up here, keep it in play, try to make sure that the tree doesn't come into play on your next shot. So you see I'm really going to the end of the fairway here. Um, and I'm trying to get it to the point where it's down there far enough that I can just carry it down there. Um, I might have got just a tad too close to the tree. But nevertheless, I'm still okay where I am. But it's nice to have a good straight look at the hole, which I may or may not. We'll have to just see. So let's see if I can't get something going towards the hole here. Get it down there and get to a tiebreaker with you guys. Um, as you see, kind of the approach that I want to do is I'm going to play it more towards here. And I'm going to go more towards full, full backspin. Um, and I'm going to just point it over here just to see kind of like distance wise what I'm looking at. And you see this is kind of spot on. So what you'll see me do from here is I'll probably adjust maybe like four rings from here. Just kind of straight over. And then I'll just throw curl, extra curl on top. What the curl did is, you know, it let me bend it around the tree basically. To where it just missed the tree. And then you see I had it just coming in a little bit too hot, but uh, nevertheless, good enough. Good enough. And we'll get to get a tiebreaker for this video. Got a little fortunate. I'm not sure what this guy, I, he might just be, you know, messing around a little bit. Because I'm not sure, like, why he hit that shot that he hit. My device is playing very slowly right now. I'm only on the first hole, so that's a little annoying <laughs> that that happens. But at this point in the game, you get a lot of tie, uh, a lot of tiebreakers with, uh, you know, you might get not live opponents. I'm pretty sure this is a live opponent I'm playing. Fairly certain. Not positive. I don't know if with their last patch... They fixed it to where, you know, all the usual signs of a replay, they might have edited it to where it's more hidden. So I'm not necessarily sure that you're always playing a live opponent. But I haven't seen, you know, what people have been referring to as a bot, like how you'll see their spin. I haven't been seeing that recently. So I don't know if that's coincidence or if just that's something that they kind of did away with. Um, nevertheless, so uh, there's a pretty decent shot. Uh, so there's two approaches I kind of take on this. I'll either do that fairway or I'll do it kind of the way that, oh, you know what, that's way too much backspin. I don't play it that much backspin, maybe like five bars, I'm thinking. Might be more like this. Um, and you got to really focus on perfect ball here. Wow. Pretty, pretty much ran out of time here. Just got it off. Man, look at my device. It is just losing it right now. And it's just short. I needed just a touch more power to beat that guy. And that was just really, really lagging. I can't believe this is just the first hole that I've played. And it's already this bad. This is just subpar that this happens that it's already lagging this bad you see notice how i'm basically keeping all my tour 11 chests just at the home screen i'm not worried about clearing any of that out right now i don't want to win and get 
a tour five chest take over my tour 11 because there's no club right now there's currently no clubs that i'm playing with other than thorn that are tour five or lower so real really no no purpose of playing this game and getting bulk chests from that from this tour so you see i'm kind of changing the way that i'm doing things because i know you've been seeing especially in like my tour 10 tour 11 all those videos i'm basically just opening as much as i can to just get as many cards as i can because it's just such a slow track My, pl my phone's playing really hot. I feel like it's uh, getting to the point that uh, I'm just going to stop playing with this uh, phone. I'm going to have to upgrade, I feel. I factory reset it just last week. And uh, it doesn't seem to uh, be improving at all on top of what I've already done to it. So... So, take a note at the spin that I'm putting on here. A little bit of top, um, plus always left. Try to keep it out of that right rough. But the thing you have to be careful if you do it this way, you have to make sure that you're over that bunker. So you're gonna see me add power here. You know, a decent amount of power. Just to make sure that the approach that I'm playing, the second hop is over that rough. So if it's not over that rough, then you put yourself where the second bounce hits the rough and potentially put you in the bunker because you can even hit that bunker over there. And the, the I don't know if you guys noticed, but they put little bumps on all these fairways. These were never there. So all those little bumps are actually causing you to... So I didn't get a very big bounce there. So of course, certain times it might hop better than others. But you're seeing my ball, it didn't really hop up in the air like it used to. Um, which is, in turn, making it so much easier to hit that bunker now. That bunker really didn't used to be in play unless uh, it was certain wins. Like, a win like this, you would never even think about that bunker. Like, it would, it would just never happen. Now, all of a sudden, you know, I have to be a little cautious of it. And the shot that I like to do here, this is one of the, this holds one of the biggest reasons that I like to have Guardian on my bag. And you see what I'm doing? I'm kind of left spinning it. Just a touch. Just to get it having momentum, but it looks like it has a left pointing wind anyway. So I'm going to try to do it more like this. You see, I got to get a little aggressive. I got to be within a ring or two. And with a wind like this, I'll probably go... Maybe about two and a half rings here. Got perfect ball. I'm assuming that's going to come up a little short. As you're seeing, it didn't quite make it up that slope uh, enough. Now, it did roll down enough, and that's part of the reason that you're seeing me put that left spin on there, is to promote it coming down that hill at a fast rate. Now what I did do is I overplayed that wind. I think I was playing it somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.75 per ring. I played it maybe 2.5 rings, somewhere in that ballpark. And it was just a little bit of an overplay. I think my accuracy number on my Guardian right now, I forget what Guardian I have, it's either a five, might be a five. I think my accuracy number is right around 75, 80. I think the club's playing about 1.5 per ring. But when it's more towards min club, it's a lot closer to two per ring. So, you know, I was kind of estimating trying somewhere in between twos, two and a half. I think I did about two and a half since it was straight downwind. And it was just a touch too much. Um, and as you see, you know, I have to calculate these super quick in my head. Like I'm not... I'm not using any kind of software or anything like that. So 
That's why you see me rush a lot of shots and not necessarily figure out what I'm doing at a very fast pace because I'm just trying to figure it out in my head real quick and talk at the same time on top of that. So it's a lot easier when I'm not talking because I don't even have to think about what I'm saying. But when I have to think about what I'm saying and do the calculations, the two don't necessarily correlate with one another as to being, you know, effective. Um, so one of the shots I wanted to show you guys on this hole, um, I'm going to go through this tree here. Uh, I highly doubt this guy's going to go through this tree and shot copy me. Uh, I, I don't even remember what driver he's playing, but if you're going to play this shot, and I got to be honest with you, it's a very, very safe shot. Um, I'm not going to lie. Like, this is just something you should definitely be considering actually playing like your actual serious shot. Um, I'm going to play that wind about, you know, three some rings, and I'm just going to hook it around the tree, kind of like this. So this way it doesn't end up hitting that tree. Now that shank's probably going to cost me a tiny bit, but not necessarily. Yeah, no, it definitely cost me because I'm, oh no, actually it didn't. That's actually spot on. So do you see why I'm going in between the club on tour five? So I'm basically, you know, giving guys kind of kind of a guide to putting it extremely close in this video. And I highly recommend, especially if you're in rookie or pro division, that you shot copy and try to figure out what I'm doing there. Because it is the, it, so they redesigned these fairways. These fairways are no longer consistent. You're seeing that guy, that guy's ball just completely checked up. He's gonna be like, what? That's probably rolling down the hill. Did he get lucky? Oh, he held it up there. That almost rolled the whole way to the bottom, which is 20 yards. So I can put it within a yard or two every time with that tree shot. Every time. I, I'm not even exaggerating. Like, let's, let's get it a couple more times. With the new redesigned fairway, I highly, highly, highly recommend you guys adopting that shot you saw me shank it even if i didn't shank it it was going to basically take the slope and come back right it, it would have been more right don't get me wrong like i i obviously overhooked it a little bit and more so than anything it probably had to do with uh, the fact that it was already left to right pointed the wind anyway so it was adding like extra side spin but you have to get it kind of behind that tree and that's why you're seeing me curl it. So take a look at my aim. And of course you have to have Thor to be doing it. If you don't have Thor in your bag right now, you can't even execute that shot. So I kind of have guys one upped right now because I'm forcing their hand. If they don't have Thor, they can't even shot copy me. But I'm letting you know right now that that's the shot you should be doing. That is the new shot for that hole. Takes all the guesswork out. And it's just super safe. And you know, this, this rough shot that you've seen me do quite a bit, it's a little unreliable in this tour. You're gonna see me, I'm gonna try to go this way. Uh, this is gonna be kind of a lucky shot if I pull it off, but I am definitely gonna go for it. What, 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 what is this that that keeps happening? Um, I have to figure out how much power to add. It looks like just a touch. Oh, I bet you that great ball calls me. It's probably in the bunker. Yep. So I was running out of time there. Had to rush. Unfortunate. It's because that ad popped up. Uh, for some reason, I don't know if it's my phone, if it's this game. But just out of nowhere, in the middle of my shot, an ad pops up on my phone all of a sudden. I've never seen it before in my life, but now it's doing it constantly. Um, so a little unlucky there. Uh, now, you guys have seen me do this on past tours. I've shown you this shot before. 
and it's still you can still do it but you have so much more chance of it of getting screwed trying to go for this shot and that's why i stopped going for it um until i have maybe a little bit more top spin i i just think it's a little bit safer if you have like six or seven rings that you can do and play it with like this this whole range it, it's just a little bit more touchy it doesn't always roll through there now he just got it to where it did but it doesn't seem to be doing it consistently anymore where it used to do that every time he could have just as easily had it stop on him, is what I've noticed. Just out of nowhere, it'll just stop. It's crazy. Craziest thing I've ever seen. Um, right now, I have a Spitfire 1. You know, it has no backspin on it. So, you got to play a little bit different. I'm not, of course, I'm not playing that wind at all. I'm not very far. Uh, you see where I'm kind of landing it? Well short of the hole because there's still a third hop and some rollout. So, I always could just, just kind of point it just a little bit less like that ah I missed my perfect ball but you see like roll out wise you know it just it's kind of the approach where I just kind of slam it into the pin and it just goes in but you got to get your perfect ball so if you had a great ball and of course you know Spitfire one it is not accurate at all so you can't miss by one bar and as you see, this guy's just going to dunk it. Um, not much I can do. So, you know, it's just kind of the luck of the draw sometimes. I can pull off this, uh, this shot a lot and get this. I just got a little unlucky break there. If that ad didn't pop up, I think I would have had enough time. Probably wouldn't have shanked it. We would have had a different outcome. It's crazy. Like, what is that? If anybody knows what that is, let me know. Because it is driving me crazy. Just all of a sudden, this app on my... Just something on my phone is just causing ads at the incorrect time to just pop up. I'll just be in the middle of a shot. Just like that. And just an ad pops up. Like, what? This is crazy. It takes me out of the app. I, I have actually got disconnected from a match because of that. Which is crazy and it just started happening i don't know if it's this game i don't know if it's something in my phone but i just factory reset this phone so how could it be this phone i think even my other phone's doing it so the whole fact that there would even be you know some kind of ad software on this game i really don't think there is but i don't know why it's happening like i'm just mid shot about to hit and then this app pops up and it's happened a couple times. One time, I didn't even realize it popped up. And, you know, I was just waiting for my opponent to hit. By the time that I came back to my phone, I had already lost the match. Because when it pops up, it takes you out of the app. So if you don't come back immediately, it, it's basically treating it as a disconnect. And, you know, my shot, my opponent was just coming up. So I was like, oh, well, I have 30 seconds to basically not even pay attention so 30 seconds later roll all around and sure enough the app that ad popped up was the entire length of my entire shot that it, that it, or his entire shot and i basically got a forfeit and i basically forfeited the match lost the coins lost it for absolutely no reason it's the craziest thing that stuff like that's happening So I don't know. I have no idea what's causing it either. So I am definitely looking to figure out why that is happening. Let's see. So we're coming up one half hour. I've been liking to shorten my videos for the most part a little bit. I'd like to play one more hole for you guys. Get back up to 5170. Hopefully. Um, let's see the hole that they give me. Uh, so these can be a little bit hard. Because I can end up... Oh, this is the good one. So there's a... When it says winner hole 2, par 4. Sometimes half the time it's the drivable par 4. Half of the time it's this one. So I'm glad it's this one. It just means I'll at least get to the tiebreaker on guys. 
and have a chance. And of course, if that one hole pops up, the one where you just saw me drive it around the tree, I'm hoping that one does come up just so I can show you how consistent that shot is. If you get that shot down, that one you just saw me play, and I'm, I'm, I know you've seen me play the other one, the, the other new one a ton of times. I do about, if you haven't, go back to the, my tour five videos and I play that religiously. I get that hole a bunch and uh, the method that I use is a very good method. It's very consistent for that hole. Now, you see all these fairway hops? This is completely changing this hole up. So you have to be a little bit more careful. You're gonna see I'm gonna add just a touch of power, but you gotta be very careful with how straight your drive is. All those bumps on the fairway are causing your ball to go all over. Sometime it'll spring it forward. It looks like this is one of the times where it's springing forward. So that looked like it was taken off a bit, but I got lucky that the second and third hop were basically like right into the faces. So I got a little lucky to hold up there or else I would have been like this guy and I would have been in the rough too long. But uh, even with this guy being in the rough, not a big deal. If you, that's one of the reasons that I recommend actually, especially on tour five, going for this shot if you can, especially if you put on a Titan or Kingsmaker or something, because being down here this far, as long as you don't have Malibu on, you can still get to the green every time. It, it, it doesn't put you in jeopardy at all. So highly recommend playing it this way. Now, I'm hoping this guy doesn't really aim here. So one of the main reasons that I don't aim this aggressively, so if this guy hits great ball right, he might not even be on the green. And so there's other ways to play that to where you don't have to play quite so aggressive. And you can still, you can still hit a decent shot. Now watch the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it to where it's way more safe than the way that guy, that guy just did it. Um, granted, I'm not in the rough. But my, my spin, it's going to be more right spin. And you see, I'm not even close. I'm not even getting close to the slope or the rough. And you can't even say that his shot is, you know, leaps and bounds better than the shot that I'm going to be able to pull off. Because it's not. It's very similar. It's going to be slow rolling down the hill, and it doesn't bring any rough into the play. You see, it's just kind of softly rolling down there, almost went in. And it didn't bring the rough in play at all. And the guy could have totally did that with his shot. He could have, you know, side spun it back up the hill and just not even messed around with that right rough. Like, if he would have just great ball shanked that to the right, he could be looking at the rough there, especially a two ring. Two ring would definitely be in the rough. So it just seems like an unnecessary risk. So one of the things that I always try to just basically always enforce is try not to do the shot that doesn't leave room for air. So always leave yourself a ring or two of air because you might need it. Um, so with this wind, you're going to see me play this completely different. Plus, I want to play it completely different for you guys so you guys see multiple perspectives here. So I'm going more towards Max Club, which is more like I told you before. It's kind of like uh, 1.5 rings per, and then plus on top of that, I'm going to need curl on top of that. Yeah, not enough curl. That is subpar. That is not a good shot. I don't even think that's going to win. I don't even think it has a chance to win, to be honest with you. <sighs> I should have added more curl than that. You know, I feel like mentally, I just kind of had a lapse of judgment. I wasn't thinking that the wind was pointed right to left. So when you see me curl that, I barely curled it. 
was probably just enough to counter the wind. That was it. I didn't add anything on top of that. So what was I thinking? It's just kind of one of those moments that I just completely had a mental lapse there. Um, just not really thinking about what that I actually needed to do to hit that close. It's, pro, it's 90, a thousand percent going to call speed the match. So there's no way his ball is going to be five yards. Absolutely no way. So the purpose of my shot, so on that win normally, I would have done the shot that you just saw him do. The purpose of my shot was to basically give you another perspective because I did that shot last time. Um, now, I shouldn't. I should have still been able to pull it off. There's no reason that I shouldn't have. It was just a complete just lack of judgment on my part, just forgetting what I was doing and not even considering the wind as a factor there. So I just completely... Just mind farted there. And, uh, but it is what it is. We'll just move on from it. Uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, you could definitely go for the shot that I did, but it would need at least, well, right about, you know, half curl. If you're talking about on a phone, you would go at least like half curl to like 60% curl. And I would have been close. I, I would have been, you know, that would have been three yards closer than where I was doing that. So. So again, you're gonna see me, uh, you know, I'll play this at least. So I'll, I'll be looking, you know, out like three, four rings and just kind of seeing where that is. And as you see, it's kind of straight in the fairway. And as you see, I don't have to add too much power here. In fact, I can't add too much power here. You see that I'm almost at the end of the fairway, but the wind's all slightly pointed towards me, so I'm gonna add just a touch. Of course, perfect ball, that's gonna you know, guarantee that I'm gonna have very accurate results. And as you see, I was very close to the end of the fairway there, so I really maximized everything there. So there wasn't really any room for short, you know, going to any bit. I, I should have probably played it just a touch more conservative, but nevertheless, that's absolutely as far as I could have hit that ball. Like there's no, I hit it perfect. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but if you hit a great ball right or left, it tends to land just a touch shorter. So it actually takes off just a touch of power when you do that. Now it's almost negligible. It will probably take off half a yard. But uh, you definitely lose just a touch of distance by hitting those shanks. So, um, but it's actually funny. It's funny that I say that because there's times where you actually end up adding that little bit that I'm just mentioning that you end up losing, you'll end up adding it on certain shots too. Um, so you're gonna see me here, I'm gonna do probably about, right around three rings. Now you can't get crazy with your curl here because you'll end up hitting the tree. So you're gonna see me just play that straight up. And I'm hoping, oh, wow, I can't believe. So I should have went full top spin there. I actually thought that was gonna be enough. That's the reason that I didn't. You saw it was plenty clear, but it was that straight into the wind. But I'm okay with where I just miss because I wanted to show you the shot. I don't know if I've been here before. And I wanted to show you how to make easy work of that mistake, just in case you make it. Um, when you're into the wind like that, you should add an extra ring. So I usually do one ring of top spin there. When you're downwind like that, like straight into the wind, you should add on to that. I should have went full. I wanted to get a little aggressive. I was actually trying to go for the hole out. So that's why you saw me getting that aggressive. 
because I actually still wanted to try to potentially make that thing. So that's why I wasn't adding. So adding basically takes that out of the equation. But I wanted to show you as to how to make easy work of this. So first off, you can try to figure out. So that's basically max. I'm about 66% of max. Um, half distance is about two rings per. And this is about two rings per. So a little bit more than that is going to be a little inside that. So I'm probably like one point something rings per. Um, and with this small wind, it's not even going to be but more than a ring that I have to play. So you're seeing me pull it right on the edge there. Nothing fancy. Perfect ball. Nothing but cup. So had that been more wind, say call it 1.75 would have been an estimation for you as to how much wind you needed to play. And you see, I kind of worked through that fast. I didn't want, I wanted to make sure I didn't run out of time. So you saw me make quick work of that. And of course you can always do it this way. This is also a safe approach, especially on light winds. This is also a very safe approach when you don't even have to play the wind. You just make sure that you always put a dead center. Oh, don't hit a great ball from that distance. So great ball probably end up costing you. Plus, as you, as you can see, you probably put it on a glitchy spot. You couldn't see the ball trail anymore, which means it might be hitting one of those new land, those new grooves that they hit where you can't see the run out. So you kind of saw that there as to where his ball trail went away. Well, it might have actually took it away because you hit one of those new mounds that they put on. There's all these little, like, tiny bumps on the fairways and greens that they just put in there that didn't used to be there. So I'm not sure why they did that, but you're seeing those there. You know, always take the safe approach. It's best to dunk that. I kind of worked through that dunk super quick. Ideally, you want to get it lined up faster than me. But as I was saying there, for, you saw, just try to focus on more of like the approach that I just did there for that lineup. I went to max club, I went to half club, so max club will be one ring per, because max accuracy is um, pretty spot on. And then um, half club will be about two rings per. So I'll try to find a spot in between there, which I was assuming, you know, it was probably like 1.75, so I just, rings. And the wind was like 1.4, so I just needed one ring, which is basically like right edge of the cup. So you saw me put it right edge. You saw me hit perfect ball, keep it in the dead center, and it was good enough to make the shot. So keep that in mind when you're using your Embringer. And uh, you should be able to make pretty easy work of pitches like that, but you gotta, you gotta go fast because you saw what I was doing there. At the very beginning, I was basically trying to look for half distance. I was trying to look for full distance. So I could get a gauge real quick because you have to be quick. You only have 30 seconds to actually get the shot off. So to actually size up the shot and be like, oh, it's 25% of full. Well, 25% on, so let's say accuracy is 100. 25% on a wedge is like four yards per ring. So it's a pretty easy wind. Even if it was a four wind, you'd only have to go one ring. So it's nice to be in there tight where you're only at a quarter of max distance. And another thing to keep in mind, where is actually max distance? So as soon as you, so you saw I had a Titan on. If you go back to that video, there's a certain spot where it says plus one yards, plus two yards, plus three yards, whatever. And that's beyond max distance. So that isn't included. So I'll always put back to the actual where max distance is, not that extra plus one yard because of Titan or plus two yards because of Titan. So I'll put back and I'll just kind of size it up and I'll say, oh, this is 60% or 70%. Now, if you had a calculator, you know, it would make it a lot easier because what I have to do is I have to just do it on the fly. And sometimes, you know, my brain just doesn't work quite as fast as it needs to. 
and I'll completely just run out of time doing the calculation and then just leave it on a certain spot and then I might not have a time to go back and adjust it and I'll be like oh you know what I might have forgot so I'm going to shank it one bar right and I'll kind of do it on the fly and it can end up costing you the hole but every now and then like I'll still be able to get it but it's just something to keep in mind uh, always be thinking about that when you're dunking and again I like I understand like you you don't have much time to, to size those shots up so I highly recommend just doing it as fast as you can and just sizing it up going super quick use my procedure the very first second you know I blow it up and I start to pull the shot arrow to full and to where the hole is so I try to put the hole as a reference point and say oh it looks like about 30 percent so that means it's 30 percent of so if you know 30 percent towards the hole towards max will fall somewhere in between you know 30 percent of whatever four rings is or it, it'll be like a ring and a half is what it'll work out to so it's all, it, it, it can all be just kind of an estimation because, you know, 25% a quarter will be four, like four yards per ring, whereas half will be two yards per ring, whereas full will be one yard per ring. So, you know, you'll just have to kind of estimate there based on how far you are. And like you'll know, like I said, like 30% there, you'll have to take off, like for example, you have to take off 1.5, it'll probably be, you know, whatever that is, 4 divided by 1.5, somewhere in there, would be roughly, so like 2.5, so I'd play it somewhere in between, sometimes I, sometimes it's, you know, hard to gauge, but you just kind of estimate and uh, you know, have a good, good idea of what you're doing. So uh, I know the ring system can be a little bit complicated. Um, like I said, you know, I do them on the fly, so there's no real calculations that I'm like doing on paper. There's no time to pull out a calculator or anything like that. Like it just eats away from your shot clock. Like I'd rather go off a of feel. And just try to say, you know, it might be best. Uh, what I should do, which is what I haven't, but I should just do this, which is take Endbringer and say, here's 10%, here's 20%, here's 30%, here's 40%, and just do some quick calculations and then just size it up real quick. And then say, oh, this is a 40% shot. I need to go this many yards per ring. So that's actually a very smart way to do it. It's not the way I play the game. Um, I, I really don't take the game too seriously. So it's hard for me to just, you know, sit and... Um, if, if, if you guys are looking for that kind of uh, data, though, I'm more than happy to provide it. If you really want a list that would be like that, if you want to just size these up real quick and have me jot them down for you, what, what I think, you know, 10% increments would be, um, I, I'm probably more than happy to uh, figure it out for you guys and give you kind of a rough estimate. Of course, it's going to vary dependent a, a be based off your accuracy number. So there's not going to be, you know, a cut and dry method, but if your accuracy is at 100 or whatever it is, like I can you know, come up with kind of rough estimating. Now, the only thing that you would need to do in that case is you'd need to size it up real quick and say, oh, this is 60% of, like if you just, you know, pull it real quick and be like, oh, this is 60% of max distance. So I'm just going to look at my 60% number, which says whatever it says. Maybe it says 2.5 rings per. And then I'm just going to real quick take this 11 win that I have, and I'm going to divide 2.5. It's going to be 2 and... 
it's going to be like, let's say it was a 2.5 win rings per, and it was an 11 wind, well, then I'm going to go four and a half, give or take. It's going to be a little bit under that, but for, and I'm just going to real quick, just play it four and a half rings. I'm going to do my adjustment, just kind of do it on the fly. All that within 30 seconds, get the shot off. So it's just something to think about. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video. If you guys need a little bit more Tour 5 help to tr try to figure out some of these tournament holes, um, I'm more than happy to provide some more holes for you guys. Um, just kind of just running out of time here for this video. Um, I hope you guys, uh, I wish you guys luck on your uh, Tour 5 or Tour 10, whatever, whatever tour you're going into, whether it's Expert, Pro, Master, or rookie uh, i wish you guys luck uh, any other comments or suggestions you guys have feel free to comment in the video and subscribe if you haven't already and uh, good luck